the next session is uh, ldl management in secondary prevention how low should we go to deal with the subject is uh, dr shomitra re and to chair the session is dr anjan lal dutt and dr raja rai dr shomitra re please please come over and yes, share uh, your screen i, I rather uh, uh, say that you you better move the screen for me i'll just say next okay jignesh you please help him sure sir and onyanda is yeah. here yes so again the, the uh, okay fine thank you thank you very much and uh, to dr shantanu guh and dr pk dev for organizing such a fantastic meet and if you note the team as uh, made by me myself dr shubhra venerjee and dr uh, shoura mukherjee have been bundled together back to back in this session uh, whether you call it pre lunch para lunch or post lunch whatever you call it so again the uh, the terminology of the subject secondary prevention so secondary prevention we have to keep what is secondary that is open to debate next please now there is an ambiguous causality of ldl cholesterol as the driver of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease next as is evidenced you see that not all cardiovascular disease risk is modifiable of the modifiable 50% can be taken care of by statin and lipid storing rather 50% of rest we call it residual modifiable risk factor and of course there are certain things we cannot change like our parents our age or our sex next please and as nicely depicted by none other than salim bhu so we enter her study about 15 years ago that the nine risk factors if we can control we can prevent more than 90% of heart attack and on top of the chart is a apo b by apo a1 which contributes to 50% of the population attributable risk and apo b by apo a1 is represented by blood ldl level next please and as in the, they have shown there is a relentless decrease of risk as we go down in the uh, ratio of apo b by apo a1 almost to 1 1 is to 1 that is uh, 50 mg ldl and 50 mg hdl maybe still the risk we are getting now here i bring a bit uh, diversion a country a reliable country like denmark has uh, talk, taken about 31 lakh people and they are showing that the once you have a heart attack the mortality increases in 5 years only Uh, around 60% people live and 40% die after 5 years how do they die next please they have another heart attack or another event of the heart attack if you see on the left panel only half of the heart attacks are on the stented segment and we are so concerned about after stenting about the dapt and the tatt and so on but more than 50% of the second event is from a totally new area which has to be taken care of by statin and by reducing ldl cholesterol not by antiplatelets next please and if you see lower ldl is associated with an increased risk reduction whether it is a genetically lower ldl pharmacologically lower ldl or by lowering ldl by spiritual means next please and it has been shown by reversal trial that if you reduce ldl you have got very hard evidence that your atheroma volume is regressing as shown by iva study next please and in the arbitra trial also you can show the lower you reduce the ldl cholesterol by increasing dose of a better molecule you get a superior efficacy or atherosclerosis regression after one year next now i take you three uh, different type of study number one is secondary prevention study prove it which shows that ldl lowering intensive versus standard and next next and intensive definitely shows a 16% relative risk reduction with high dose of atorvastatin compared to a standard dose of pravastatin these are for high risk secondary prevention patient second example next please is 
chronic coronary disease patient tnt trial again atorvastatin 80 versus atorvastatin 10 and you have got a significant uh, 22% reduction of event if you reduce cholesterol more aggressively and third i take the third scenario next please the primary prevention trial that is the jupiter trial here also rosuvastatin versus placebo and next please and you show that 44% reduction of event if you reduce LDL cholesterol and CRP. So we have got three scenarios, the prevention of low risk people of chronic coronary syndrome and people of primary prevention setup where higher doses of or higher intensity of statin with reduction of LDL cholesterol compared to the comparable arm is showing benefit. But how low do we get? Yes, next please. Now you see the prove it on your right, the secondary prevention. What benefit you get if you keep on reducing LDL? 80 to 100 if you see is the refer, 60 to 80 you get benefit, 40 to 60 you get 33% benefit, below 40 you get 40% benefit. No, 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 please go back, go back. If you come to the TNT trial of chronic coronary syndrome, from 100 to below 64 of LDL, you get an incremental benefit, which is very significant. Now you come to the Jupiter of primary prevention. Above 50 and below 50, even in primary setup, you get a significant p-value. So whatever be your setup, primary prevention, stable patient, or unstable secondary prevention patient, your cutoff may be 40, 50, or 60, and not 70 or 100. That to new for a long time because these are 10 year, 15 years old trial. Why didn't we discuss? Why don't we show this trial? Because we could not reduce the LDL to 40. So why, why is, should we bother the patient and destabilize the general physician that you have got a good goal, but you cannot attain the goal? What is the point in saying that? Next, please. Even in the secure PCI trial, only um, published two years ago, intensive lipid lowering after an acute coronary syndrome starting within 10 days, showing that you are getting a very good effect in long-term follow-up. Next, please. And the statin STEMI patient is having the almost same conclusion, a meaningful improvement in immediate coronary flow if you start high-dose statin before your angioplasty. Next, please. So there is a lot with knowing everything. There is a large global population in need of additional LDL. Next, please. If you just take three areas, United States, Europe, and Japan, you will get 13 million people who are not even achieving that higher level of LDL goal that is around 70 to 100, let alone 50. Next, please. And which has been adequately shown in this trial from, in, and, and from Sachadeva that 150,000 patient hospitalized with coronary artery disease most of them had got their LDL above 100 or 130. Next, please. And it has been proved from Dr. Kaul and group and Dr. Sony and group from India in, in DICE trial and clarity registry that more than 70% of our coronary patients have got LDL above 70 when they are hospitalized. Next, please. So we have now the tool so that we discuss it boldly. PCS can I most direct approach to LDL lowering? Next, please. Whether it is lowered by Mendelian random, by luck, or by genetics, that your star, or by therapeutic, that's your doctor's credit. However, you lower it. Next, please. You get a fantastic benefit on top of statin because LDLC is lowered precipitously. Next, please. And here you can see up to below 20 you are getting incremental benefit. 20 to 50, there is 25% reduction. Below 20, you get another 6% incremental reduction, even if below 20. Is it safe? Next, please. And that is that taken up by ESC, that ASCVD, you note know very clearly, very high risk by clinical or imaging. You do not need to have a fluorid heart attack or cardiogenic shock. Even by coronary CT angiogram, if they prove you have got a substantial amount of atheroma in your coronary artery, 
your target is 55 milligram of LDL cholesterol. You don't need to have an event. That's what I told. What is secondary? What is primary? What is primordial? Is very gray. Next, please. And if you see, for patient with ASCVD, you experience a second episode within two years, not necessarily another heart attack. It could be a stroke or it could be a gangrene. While taking maximal statin, your goal is now 40, not even 55. Next, please. And with this uh, def definition, loads of people have come under the realm of treatment. Next, please. But we are still hesitant. Why? Because there is chance of side effect. What is the side effect? Next, please. Most of them, the muscular effects are nocebo effect. Next, please. And if you see here, association between statin and diabetes, yes, there is 9 to 10 percent increased diabetes. We know there is diabetes and we know how to tackle diabetes. Next, please. Malignancy, not really. Next, please. Renal failure, if anything, it is good with statin. Next, please. Elderly people, they are really benefited. There was some hesitation of giving statin to above 75. Now it is gone, only last year's publication. Next, please. And you get all the benefit by this huge meta-analysis. Next, please. If you see what you gain, all the major thing you gain from non-fatal MI to angina to only stroke is not so much different, you know. But you see that the risks are really not accepting diabetes. Next, please. This is a very fantastic slide for perspective of benefit of risk if you achieve 80 milligram LDL or over five years. What you gain? You prevent 1,000 event, secondary event, 500 primary event. 1,500 event you prevent in five years against 100 diabetes, around 100 muscle symptom, and around 15 to 20 all other. So 225 side effect compared to 1,500 event prevention. So what do you want? Next, please. Inclisiran continues to surprise us. Next, please. Even with a fall of 60% of LDL cholesterol. Next, please. You get a fantastic benefit only published a few months ago, three months ago at ACC, that you get a fatal and non-fatal MI and stroke are considerably reduced. Next, please but with no extra side effect. Head to head with Ripatha, there is absolutely safety. Next, please. Next, please. And the safety we are getting every day, there is data of safety. Now there are thousands of patients who are showing safety of inclisiran in a way showing the safety of LDL below 30 milligram or 20 milligram. Next, please. So my last slide, a new concept. Next, please is the total duration of cholesterol we reduce, not just the amount. If you start in glycerin at the age of 30 years, for every Tom, Dick and Harry on the road, just pick up your person, give an glycerin, you can give 30 years of extra life to this patient. Instead of dying at 70, you will die at 100 years of age. Fantastic statistics. Next, please. And this is my last slide. I take one more minute. Annual time average LDL. Now we know all things are good as long as we take the medicine. Next, please. If you see, 60% of people stop their statin in five years. And 60% of people stop their Ripatha in six months. Next, please. Why? Because... For statin, you have to do 365 endeavor for a year. For Ripatha, you have to do 24 endeavor per year. For Inclisiran, you have to do one endeavor per year. And what is the attrition of statin? When we expect 39 milligram reduction, we get 23 milligram. For 23, we get 39. For 31, we get 39. So we are not getting the benefit what we wanted by proper adherence. So adherence is very important. So next, please. 
So future directions, we know the PCSK vaccination and gene editing, and we know that no lower limit for LDL for all this therapy. Next, please. My summary slide. So ladies and gentlemen, LDLC is the most important modifiable risk factor for ASCVD. Next, please. Target LDL depends on the clinical scenario. Next, please. In secondary prevention, risk stratification is important. Next, please. In highest risk group, target may be as low as 40. Next, please. In very high risk group, it must be below 55. Next, please. In high risk, it is around 70 or low. Next, please. These targets are now achievable with lifestyle management and pharmacotherapy. Starting side effects are real but overemphasized, but should be kept in mind. LDLC value as low as 20 is now proved to be safe. So go ahead, my dear friends, and see the Niagara Falls and enjoy the beauty of the Niagara Falls. Next, please. Thanks. Dr. Anjan Dattu and uh, Dr. Raja Rai, please. Yeah, Dr. Shomitra Rai, thank you very much for a very teaching lessons for us. I'm glad to learn that you had mentioned about the class 2A indication of ESC, but LDL lower has been recommended as 40 for those who had a second vascular event after MI, which we don't usually speak. We have very correctly pointed out that not only the figure of LDL, the duration of LDL is also equally important, like TTR and warfarin that we use in the anticoagulants. But I want to know from you, duration and figure of number of LDL is okay, but what about the speed at which LDL is reduced? That is also probably important when you are dealing with a case of acute coronary syndrome. And the Indian Society of Lipids, the Lipid Society of India, in a consensus statement, has recommended 30 milligram LDL for the high risk patients. What is your take on that? Yes. First is the acute reduction is now ga gaining uh, um, inertia by the uh, by the uh, angioplasty trial, where it is shown that before angioplasty, if you acutely load, then maybe there is some pleiotropic effect. We are not even sure whether it is due to LDL reduction or the pleiotropic effect of statin. This is still an open area. So I won't go much into that, but I'll say as soon as possible. And of course, if not days, must be in terms of months, because in hypercholesterol, familiar hypercholesterolemia patient, the quicker you reduce the LDL cholesterol, the more you save their poor organs. That is very important. And we should, rec we should start statin therapy from the age of nine or 10. That is the newest recommendation. About the 30 milligram, of course, we Indians are more prone to have atherosclerotic and diffuse atherosclerotic disease compared to Caucasians. So if Caucasians say 40, why can't we say, say 30? We always go 10 ahead. We are 10 years younger to have heart attack. We have got 10 years, uh, 10 times more having uh, diffuse coronary disease, 10 times to have, have got more multiple coronary artery disease. So why don't we go 10 milligram below? That is, I'm saying jocularly, but I think as low as 20, we have got a uh, document. So if we can reasonably attend 30, we should not reduce the dose. That is my appeal. Don't de-escalate the therapy. You may not try to achieve 30 or 20. You may be happy below 40 or below 50. But if your patient comes with an LDL of around 27, do not please reduce the current medicines. Let him be to 27 or 20. It is safe for him and it is good for him. Dr. Raja Rai, that is the question actually from the floor. Uh, when is inclusion expected to be available? Any of you can respond. Another Raja. three to five years. Because you have to have the Orion 9. Orion 9 is coming up, which is uh, specifically looking into ACVD. They have started recruitment. Their recruitment will be finished in 2022. So maybe in 23 or 24, we will get the full data analysis. So we have to wait for three to four years. Uh, Dr. Shomitra, Rai, you remember Bronwald's famous editorial, the three yes. factors to three yes. factors to do away with ischemic heart disease from the world on earth, even, and one of them is inclusion and genetic and imaging. And he said inclusion is the best. And he said 
you start everybody on 30 years to give increase and i told him without naming him as a flu vaccine he said yes. give like a flu jab to all the society people at the age of 30 a dose of increseran don't think about the cost effectiveness that will be hugely cost beneficial that is the last take when he told it in rome uh, rome uh, uh, esc dr raja rai you are on mute yourself you are not audible dr raja rai there is one question one question if a patient has a intracerebral bleed and the patient is 75 years and above would you like to reduce the dose of atorvastatin i would here in acute bleed still the miracle trial is uh, is looming in the background so maybe in the acute stage first 3 months it might uh, destabilize the patient and might be some more leaking of blood we are not very sure but anyway we are not uh, expecting a heart attack within 3 months of a intracranial hemorrhage so maybe i will reduce the dose for for the time being i'll keep the ldl around 70 but but the recent american stroke association has said that they would any kind of stroke want the ldl below 50 they are now yeah. getting bold, as bold uh -huh. as the cardiologists yeah Achha, am i audible now uh -huh. yeah yeah acha i shomit to thank you uh, for your excellent uh, deliberation as usual now my uh, comment is that uh, when you uh, go down from 60 downwards the ldl cholesterol you get an incremental benefit but not in terms of absolute reduction mostly in terms of relative risk reduction to the tune of 20 25 but that may translate into 2 to 3 percent absolute risk reduction now yeah. my question is even if you get a sort of any side effect like a hemorrhagic stroke or something like that which is extremely rare would you think that will be because of the medicinal effect or would you think that will be because of the too much lowering of the ldl cholesterol i'm too small a fry to have my opinion on this you have to have randomized control trial to prove or your disprove or give opinion it i don't think it it is related i think uh, cerebral hemorrhage is so common in elderly patient with right. hypertension and other risk factor there is no point bringing another risk factor like a statin or ldl to account for the hemorrhage i don't think so uh, but in sparkle study shomitra I know. Uh, the, those those who were on atorvastatin, they had a 55 patients in intracerebral hemorrhage compared to 30 or 32 in those who were not taking atorvastatin. <laughs> Maybe just a coincidence. They are not dying I of heart attack. Are, that's why. I think they're we are not dying of heart time. attack. That's why they are dying of intracranial hemorrhage. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you.